What's going on? It is go time. This is Mortar Mike, and this is yet another Watcher of Realms video. Today, we tackle the Guild V Guild, but there's a big reason why we do that. It's not just for the Guild V Guild. Oh no, there is new content coming to the game that involves using your demons in PVE content, not just in Guild V Guild. So what I'm doing today is getting my practice on along with getting rewards from probably the second to third best area in the game to get consistent rewards. Number one is going to be Guild Boss. I'll give you that. That's a no brainer. Number two, which is a close second, is Void Rift. Once you start getting nightmare rewards and exclusive artifacts and ancients, which they added to the pool that you can get as random drops, which is nice. Then you get in the Guild v. Guild. And Guild v. Guild, I'll be honest, it's one of the most easiest ways to get rewards in this game, including uh, ancient summoning shards, get like credit for different areas and different shops in the game. But the challenge that people have with Guild v. Guild are they're usually getting, they're a little disinterested because they don't understand how to do well in it or they're having a difficulty with their defense always getting knocked down or they're working on their offense. So what I wanna do is as we get into this today, first thing I want you guys to do is remember this. If you wanna know advice or you wanna get feedback, drop it in the comments. That's why I work best. You send me information, hey, I like this right here. I wanna talk about this. I have a comment from a, um, from a viewer that watched before said they wanted to have more content on Guild v Guild defenses. So I'm gonna be making that as well because people wanna know how to make defenses that are very tough to beat. They exist, they're out there, and we might run into some of them today. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But before we get any further in the video, the first thing you know we must do, or it's like the fourth or fifth by now, is we have to put on our war colors because it's truly go time. So let's see if we can get that perfect eight, shall we? Also thinking, I'm really thinking if I'm gonna do a Falcia summoning video today, I think I may. I just wanna get Falcia. I'm a collector guy, I like getting them. Uh, but the new content coming to the game is nice. So look, that's what I was just talking about, the rewards before. And they're also incentivizing you getting more guild balls, I'm not guild balls, getting more demons that you use in Guild v Guild because of the upcoming content. I cannot wait to know more about this. I have a little bit to share about it, but um, I think you guys are gonna like this. As you can see, we didn't do too well. 41 to 43%, 2% gain over us. Not bad. Shout out to Legion Usurpers. Uh, Earthsurpers, Usurpers, I think it's Usurpers, right? I got diamonds, I got guild coin, I got guild EXP, which makes everybody in the guild get better credit. They're probably gonna add adjustments to the shop where as you get higher guild levels, you get more things you unlock. So that's something to be mindful of. That's why it's good to have guild XP so your shop can unlock the max things you can purchase. Shard Ancient and Summoning Crystals and a chest which gives me five of up to epic rarity. So useful. Now I'll mention this too. This is in the update that they mentioned as well. This is how I know it's gonna be something they really want people to pay attention to. Um, in the update, I'm gonna full screen it here and then get back in the Guild v Guild. In the update, they mentioned they're gonna give everybody all of the rare champions. So all of the rare champions are gonna automatically be available in your account. Now I'll be honest, that's not amazing in Guild v Guild. Most of them aren't that good. Skeleton Warrior is not bad. The doggos are good because they're used for the same reason as the epics. Epics are a little bit more durable. It's wonderful because it's gonna get you guys equipped for it. That being said, back into the game because we're gonna do some battles and I wanna talk y'all head off all day. Get my rewards here. I know I wasn't first place. I did terrible. <laughs> you want to get your demons ready for the upcoming PVE content. I think it was called Demon Crusade or something like that. So I'm looking forward to that. I really want to see how they work that. They've been putting their L's on, our, on us early. Okay, cool. You already know where I'm going. I'm going straight to the fortress, which I learned is the central key. All right, so I'm looking at the team that's on the bottom here. We have Trust, we have Regulus, we have Silas, Leia, and Valkyra. This team may be bunched up in the back corner, which I'm betting they are. They are. What's the challenge that I would have with this team? The biggest thing I want to do is drop the enemies in the back. If I can drop the enemies in the back, this team would be much easier to beat. That being said, Silas is back there. So how do you circumvent Silas? One of the easiest ways that you can get around Silas is to just time around his ult. When he's not doing his ult, he does significantly less damage. When he's doing this ult, he can melt any demon that you have. So that's just to be warned, it does exist. There is one champion, which I would say is the single best attacker in Guild v Guild is gonna be Silas. Because when he lights up, there's nothing that lasts. There's nothing that survives the damage he does. Uncommon Destroyers last a little while, but they still get melted because of all the defense he ignores. How would I take on this team? Let's look at the team again. Everybody's aimed downward to the battle. 
So I need to get enemies behind the front line that can do good damage and get back there and take out Volker. If I can get that, then I'll be fine. Regulus plus trust is probably gonna be a plus eight and block. So I need to get the support done before I get them done. And Silas is gonna try his best to snipe me in the meantime. Who am I gonna start with? I would use, use the bookkeepers, but I think trust is gonna be too hard to kill. I would love to use trust to get back there and get the kill. Party mistake and I might still use them though because they're not doing heavy magical damage. Valkyrie doesn't do enough magical damage for me to be concerned, I'll be honest. So the Uncommon Destroyer may not be a bad idea, but it takes forever to get to the fight. I'm gonna try Uncommon Destroyer. I'm gonna give him a shot. Are you sure now, about you know that? what? No, I got a timer on Silas's ult and I have not gotten his timing down. Let's be real here. Let's get to the Bookkeeper. I'll try the Bookkeeper. We need a tank to be able to keep the other guys from getting washed. Valkyra is gonna do some AOE hits. If I'm not mistaken, let's go back one just to make sure. She does magical damage, right? Yes, she does magical damage, so does um, physical damage, piercing damage. So we need to get past Valkyra, and I don't know if she hits aerial target, but if she doesn't, then I'm in luck here. So I'm gonna send these bad boys here. Those are gonna be my best hope at dropping Valkyra. I think Necros are gonna be necessary. If I'm gonna drop trust, my biggest thing is to have to be able to hit our main man in the front head on, to be able to hit Regulus head on. Regulus is going to be tough, but once I drop the defenses behind them, it should be a little easier. I know, I'm rant, but you have to do this so you do good and give you guilt. Let's be real. I think this is going to end up being our team. Tank is just going to be the absorbing hit, so if an ult pops off, he has a chance of making the ult stay in him from Silas. Keeper is going to do a decent job of trying to drop trust. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. This is a tough team. Hmm. Let's switch these out here. Most important champions to the far left followed by your other champions um, going down to the right. That way the very left champion gets the highest BP boost, which means they're gonna do the best work that they can do in Guild of Guild. So let's do our save. I think I, I did affiliate, just to make sure quickly again. <laughs> so let's go. Hmm, this is gonna be interesting. I don't know if I'm gonna beat this team. I'm at 369, I think they're at what, 384? But let's see what we do, shall we? All right, Silas is gonna pretty much watch this bad boy here. That is fine. Right. Was not a bad idea is if I would have sent the um, Uncommon Destroyer out followed by Necro because the Necros would have went ahead of Uncommon Destroyer and I would have opened it up a little bit too. Let's go ahead and send our bookkeepers here. This is an attempt to drop Trust. If I can kill Trust two times, I should be okay. Next, I'm gonna have our two Flyers. Yeah, I don't expect them to make it to that fight over there. I just, I know it. Or, ooh, poor timing on the, on the flyers. I should have waited. <laughs> oh, she's not doing a wonderful job on heels. Come on, get them hits in bookkeeper before Silas wakes up. Oh, if Silas does his ult, we're in trouble. Oh, they're doing a good job on regulars, not bad. Interesting but they're not getting kills that I want. I want kills, and they're not getting them. Oof. Well, Regulus' first alt is down, but we are almost out of time to be able to make this work. Skeleton guys aren't doing that bad, but they're not gonna get the dub. They might get past here, which isn't bad. Yeah, get some choppers in there, but that looks like it's gonna be a tough match. Hmm. Interesting. So you notice Regulus did not die. Regulus is one of the best uh, defenders in Guild v. Guild. Man, that is a tough team. I want to beat that team. I want to try it again. I want to beat that team. So what am I going to do differently to go against this team? I'm going to try one more time. This time, I'm going to send the Necro in sooner, followed by the tank is going to be swapped out with the Uncommon Destroyer. Now. I told you before, you saw me do the, you saw me talk about this. If the Uncommon Destroyer goes out, he takes seven costs, which is crazy. And he's very slow, but that does mean that we can set up for a nice win coming up. So what do I mean by that? What do you mean by that? Boy? What do you mean in particular? What does that mean? What do you mean by that? I know Silas has a good chance of still watching them. That's why I have Necromancer involved because I want Silas shooting other things than um, Uncommon Destroyer. That being said, if I can get the Uncommon Destroyer out first, then send a Necro afterwards, the Skeletons usually walk faster than him. 
which means that we can get a big pile of enemies at once. And by that time, I probably can get my bookkeeper in the fight and he can, wait, yeah. I could probably get my bookkeeper in the fight to drop trust. Regulars is still gonna be worked. If I can get the flyers in there, to be nice. Flyers may not even be used. I'm really gonna gauge it by what's happening in the fight. So first I'm gonna get my count up to 10 before I send anything out. When I say this guy takes forever, he is slow. But I intentionally want him to be slow because then I can send my necros out with him and stack up. Niner, that's good enough for me. All right, now he's super slow. I just want the ult from Silas to go on the necros instead. So this is real tough. This is tough timing. But they went past, which is great. So now you see how now you're gonna see what I'm trying. Let's see if it works, right? Okay. Decent on the bookkeepers. Let's see what they do. Is he doing any damage? Bro, did you get affiliated? What are you doing? He's not doing much of anything. That damage is terrible. Bro's about to get fired. Bro just got fired. But you know what? It's probably because Valkyra also did some really good damage on him and dropped him down. So I'm sending my combo of melee warriors here. This is good here because they're helping to slow down Silas doing main damage on my main champions. So that's useful too. But yeah, regulars is a tough nut to crack. They got past. They probably can drop trust, but the time is too close. The time is too close for it to work out. See, she got a res, which is nice. But you saw that team was a tough team to crack. So a combination of Trust and Regulus in the front, they are both very, very tanky. And if you can keep Silas's ult coming quick enough, you can drop just about any team coming to him. I miss, I, I'm, I'm under, I'm about to say misunderestimated. I think they misunderestimated the will and determination of the commander in chief too. I underestimated Valkyra's damage that she could do in that fight. She did a really good job. If I paid more attention, I'll be honest, I would have sent somebody other than the Uncommon to short. He did not do what I thought he was gonna do. But he's gonna do really good damage. I'm gonna actually check to see if he was booked though. I'm probably not gonna battle this team. Were you affiliated? Yeah, it didn't change. He just didn't do anything. Unacceptable. <laughs> All right, next team. This is one of the top teams in Guild v Guild. This team right here is really good. One, because Baron and Torador have to be killed twice. And Lily prevents them from staying dead because she has a really amazing revive. And Hatsid and Arrogance do a pretty good job on damage. I'm gonna just show it so you see this team. They're gonna be stacked up in the back corner because this team is one of the best team comps in Guild v Guild. Do you need Torador? I would say yes, because Wrath can be used, but Wrath can be taken out, which makes it an easier team to beat. Torador has to die twice. That being said, Arrogance can do insane good damage. He has physical damage, and Hatsit also does physical damage. So that's the one weakness of this team. If you can get strong tanks in there, there's a chance you can survive and allow your um, damage dealers to do some work, you know, from a little bit of distance. The problem is Lili. Lily has an ability, prevents incoming fatal damage one time for one ally in range, and immediately grants this ally a shield equal to 20% of their max HP for 10 seconds. This effect can only be triggered one time every minute. The problem with that is when she gets an ult, like when she gets awakened, I think it's like awakened five or awakened three, she also negates damage for a period of time while doing heals in the background on them, which is basically getting them to the full health. So I will tell y'all, I consider battling this team. I'm not about to waste a turn on this team. This is one of the best teams in Guild v Guild defense. Hey, what is happening? I hope that you are enjoying the video that I have going on right now. I wanted to make a small intermission in this video and no, it is not an ad. It is to promote another content creator that is making great content and Watcher of Realms. Their name is Slate, Watcher of Realms. It is a YouTube channel that I just ended up viewing like two days ago. And this very defense that I'm talking about here, that's one of the hardest defenses in the game, she shows how to use the bombers on how to take out this offense. Now it's inside of like these strongholds or like the left to right ones is just straightforward. She shows a really good way of how you can get them in there to get behind the lines and do heavy damage. 
bitch. So I had to give props for that because if a dope person in the community is making dope content, I wanna make sure that the spotlight goes on them so that you guys can also learn how to be amazing in Guild v Guild. So what I want you to do, I want you to see this image up here and I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can check out her page as well, Slate Watcher of Realms, Slate WOR for short. She does not know I'm doing this. I just think when people make great content, they should have eyeballs sent to them and they should get attention for it. So shout out to Slate for making this video on how to successfully use the unalive bombers to get through one of the toughest defenses in Guild v Guild. Check the description, make sure you check out her channel, send her a like, and make sure you send the um, Mortar Mike sent me here, drop that in the comments, because I want her to be able to see this and know that people support people that make great content for this game. But yeah, back to the game, back to Guild v Guild. Let's do it. How would I beat this team? That's the problem. You would have to use a champion that can do great damage very quickly, burst damage. So you could use the unalives. The problem is, it's hard to gauge the range that the unalives can reach. We might have just, hmm. I call them the unalives, but they're the beetles that blow up. <laughs> there may be a way to beat them. So how would I go against this team? I would have to use strong single target champions. Mobs won't work as well because if they try to get too far ahead, we're gonna get the ult that pops off from Hatset. And if I'm not mistaken, Hatset holds her ult until things are in range. She's not just gonna pop it off and nobody there. So that's gonna be a challenge of trying to get too many enemies past to do damage. And plus she, her regular attack bounces off of different enemies. So what will Mortar use against this? I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna use champions that can sit for a long time, tank out and do a good bit of damage. Now I need to review my boy here because he let me all the way down. His attack is S, his defense is S, so he will be ideal against this team. But he did not do very well, and plus he's slow, he's slow as molasses. He's uber slow. <laughs> I'm gonna give him another shot. I'm gonna try him again. Are you sure about that? Let's see if he does a decent job. Baron is the biggest issue on this entire team because Baron gets his ult so freaking fast, and he's just hard to kill. Just generally just hard to kill. So I'm gonna start off by having an Uncommon Destroyer. They're gonna make their way in, followed by our melee fighters. Since we're gonna have single target hard hitters, we want the healer involved in there too. Our Unalives because we want a chance to break the enemy lines. And a part of me is thinking I might even use a Scourge because they can hit, they can attack multiple enemies at once. So they're gonna be able to hit, they're gonna be able to hit um, Torador. I don't think they can reach Lili. They can reach Lili, that's even better. He does AOE damage, if I'm not mistaken, so he can hit more than one enemy, which is what we want. Yeah, swings the chain hammer and the smash to the ground, dealing high AOE damage to the target and their adjacent ground heroes. Ground heroes. So he's only gonna be hitting the two in front. He's not gonna be doing much to Lili. We're hoping the Unalives can go in there and do that. So here's what I'm gonna say. Unalives have to be number one. Melee is number two, number three, number four, and we're gonna give it a shot. This is gonna be an interesting match. So I'm gonna start with my big boy to, to make his way over there. Probably gonna send the cleavers along with him and then the healer is gonna catch up. All right, let's go. Let's go. Whew. This is gonna be interesting. I really wanna see where this champion, Uncommon Destroyer, shines. I wanna see him shine. I want to. But my boy didn't give me much to work with last fight. <laughs> All right, so I just want most of the attention to go on to him. You dare think you can resist me. All right. Who are we gonna send after that? Next, we're gonna send our melee boys. They're just gonna do as much as they can against Baron. And I'm gonna send my unalives right as they get towards the fight. All right. Actually, we're gonna send our healer. And we're gonna send our unalives. That's a pretty good merge. And when I say merge, I mean the champions are so close together, they're gonna attack at nearly the same time. So let's see what happens here. Looks like the melee boys didn't do too well. That's fine. We're gonna send our next melee boys. Can they make any damage? I don't think they made their mark, so they did not get the damage. So this is gonna be a much harder match to win. I think I'm gonna pretty much lose this match now. But, you know, still just send them. Yeah, I shouldn't have sent the second healer. Yeah, they're melting. They're melting. Yeah, I almost I also forgot that Torador does pretty good damage for a damage deal. I mean, for a defender. Yeah, this match is a wrap. Scourge gonna go in way too late, and they can't do enough damage because they have to be protected. Yeah, that's a wash. Sheesh, that's a wash, and he's just not gonna make it. Okay. 
My boy Uncommon Destroyer just got a, a, a no in my books. He's not doing well. I'm gonna have to get rid of this dude here. I can use the other tank. I may get better results. So let's see what we would do differently in this battle. In this battle, I'm gonna use the other tank. Yes, I'm gonna go against the same team again because I want a chance to beat him. I wanna see if I can beat him. And I wanna see if I can make a strategy that works well against them. Getting rid of Uncommon Destroyer, sending our new tank in. He's gonna be very tanky, so it's going up front. Number two, number three, four, number four, number five. I think that's good. Our uh, Scourge is a lot weaker than I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be a little tankier. He was not. So I'm going to also send, how's our shield boy looking? What's your stats here? Are you at least a B or an A in defense? Nice, double S, which is good against um, the champions that do uh, physical damage. So that's not bad, that's gonna be useful. This is a very tanky team. Uh, we only have two options of damage. Actually, the big tank is not bad on damage, but he does single hits at a time, and that's not gonna do well against somebody like a Lili um, because she's gonna counter every single hit. Now, our goal now is to get the unalives to get in there at the right time. This is gonna be interesting. Let's, let's quick affiliate again to make sure. All right, this is the team I'm hoping can beat this other team. This is one of the best guild v guild defenses that exists, especially because Baron and Torador take two times to die and Lili can revive both of them, or revive one of them at least um, once. So. Very tough. I'm actually gonna send some heal. I'm gonna do it different this time. I'm gonna send healers with them early on. Let's see if we can get something out of that. This is gonna be an interesting idea. I just wanna see how long they can last too. Now, along with that, I'm gonna send my unalives in a moment. Those healers are not nearly as close as I thought they'd be. <laughs> but if you notice, the uh, tank is lasting a lot better. Probably still gonna drop pretty soon. Healers are doing good, getting them back in the fight. Melee boys didn't do well. Melee boys aren't doing well at all, to be honest. Oh, that's terrible. They're gonna get wiped. Yeah, they're not even gonna reach. Mm, that hurts. Ooh, that hurts. Ooh, that hurts. Cause they had a big payload. They had a real big payoff to get out in this team. Hey, it did not work. Yeah, this match is pretty much a wash, but I like the fact that that tank, if I got the healer close to him early in the fight, I think it would have lasted a little bit longer. Um, this match is a watch by the looks of it. It doesn't look like I'm going to win it. Just sending stuff out because I just want to see what damage I can do. It must have been a really big adjustment on those melee boys and meat cleavers because they're dropping like flies now. It used to be pretty tanky. Like they, but not tanky like this guy here that just cost me the end of the match. No, I cost myself the end of the match. But they used to be able to take a few hits. They dropped like flies just now. I didn't expect arrogance and um, hat set to be able to drop them that quickly. But hey, it is what it is, it happens. Now, the next thing we're gonna go against, part of me is thinking I need to go ahead and just start hitting the other ones. <laughs> These main fortresses are tough. Okay, Lato's secondary team is probably gonna be an easier team for me to beat. Um, I'm willing to bet that they're halfway through the um, defense area, they're halfway through this, uh, the barricade, and there's some enemy that's gonna be on the left-hand side aiming right. Oh, they're all bunched up. Never mind. this team is actually gonna be fairly easy to beat. He's tanky, but if I ignore defense or do good, good damage there, I'll be fine. So here's what's interesting. We have three enemies that can all hit aerial units, which is nice. Trust probably cannot hold the line the way that he needs to. That being said, if I send a high collection of enemies at once, there's a good chance I can overwhelm this defense. So the number one enemy I send for that, besides my tanky boy here, is of course gonna be our boy, the Necromancer. Necromancer is probably one of the best, if not the best rated demon in Guild v Guild. But along with that, we gotta send the Bookkeeper because the Bookkeeper is gonna do a good job of getting rid of Aracha. Aracha has the slows where she hits you with webbing that stops your enemies from doing anything, stop your, demons from doing, stop your demons from doing anything. And so we need her gone. Even though she doesn't do good damage, she slows down what we're trying to get done. After that, we're gonna send maybe our, hmm, our healer. They have three options to drop arrow units, so we're just gonna send our cleavers. But let's check our cleavers out here. Double S on damage, which is nice. HP is at an A, defense and magical resistance are at Bs, which is not awful, but I guess it didn't do well that time. That's fine. All right, so I think this team is gonna do a good job. Let's send here, one, two, three, that should be good. Meet cleavers here, and okay. Still says it's gonna be hard, so I have 365,000 BP, he has 400. So it's a 35,000 um, BP difference. Let's see if that matters enough in this content. 
Hex is also a piercer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so he's gonna get a bonus in extra range so I can tap it and see. The whole area is where he's gonna be coming through, which is fine. That was kind of creepy. But you could tap them mid-combat and see where their range is. That is creepy to hear when you're just watching. Yeah. So one, so you have quite a few champions that can hit down only at once. But I should be okay. I should be okay. If I can drop a Racha, I'm gonna make it through this team pretty easy. I'm gonna do it. All right here. Boom. That's a decent blend. That'll work. What just happened? Oh, he pulled him. He pulled him through. That's smart. I wouldn't think to do that with trust. Sorry, because it doesn't seem like a good idea. But hey, I guess it pulls him into the area. I guess. <laughs> but I already killed a Racha. Didn't want to kill her that early, but she's gone. <laughs> that is pretty cool. I'm gonna send another tank in a little early. I think they're gonna go ahead and win this because Zillix is pretty easy to drop. Yeah. That was cool to see Trust do that, but I thought he was gonna pull to him, not through him. That's not good. <laughs> if I got a champion that can survive the battle, so I'm about to auto that, get that extra win. Okay, um, I would say that that's a good strategy if you have a champion that can deal enough damage to kill them quickly. Sure. Uh, Trust isn't the one. Oh, but Trust is good for that. Tr that was cool to watch Trust do that. I'll be honest, that's pretty cool. But it's not good to send him and pull him into a fight, and then he's still doing the same job, that my demon's doing the same job, which is tanking. I'm just tanking damage still, and you basically made it easier for me to hit a Racha. <laughs> Who's who I wanted to kill? Let's see if she actually kills a Racha this way. It's cool with a little stun. And he's hitting a Racha. Yeah, so Racha's gonna die. Uh, once the bookkeeper's getting combined, she's gone. And he's still in there tanking. That's a cool idea. You need a champion that can do stuns in that case. Now, who would I say that would be a good combination with? A Captain Rev. A Captain Rev would be awesome there because he stun lots very often when he's doing his different attacks. Next team up above him, I'm not touching that team. It's a good team, but I want to get some dubs today. <laughs> what I may end up doing is with my last two attacks, I'm going to soften up some of the defenses that are in the simpler areas. Uh, the uh, not central key, but stronghold, whatever they're called, the watchtowers or whatever they are. But I want to make some, uh, I want to do this with my last two attacks because this is going to help my other guild members. What do you mean by that? So right now I see that I only have two attacks left. If I can get two wins, that's great. But what I think is a really good deal now is to pave the way for other guild v guild members, guild, um, guild mates, so that they can see how to beat these teams. So what I'm going to do is beat these teams and then show them how, you know, and that makes a record so that they can see, oh, that's how I can take them on. Let me do the same thing. Let me get a dub. But I will be honest, this takes communication with your guild. I will recommend, I hope you guys have a Discord. If not, definitely consider making one because it makes communication very easy. In-game chat, almost irrelevant. Nobody really uses it and it takes too long to do. I'd rather type something on my phone or on a keyboard. That way you can coordinate attacks a lot better. This team, wait, they're Olivia? Olivia's tanky, I'll give him that. A Racha, I'm gonna take a Racha out with a bookkeeper. She's gonna drop. We're gonna get our heals and stuff. Regulars can't get any heals from that angle, which is interesting. I don't know about that team, that's an interesting team. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can beat them. It's just an interesting team. I'm not sure what the game plan was with the team. Silas is gonna do good work. Silas is gonna do good work against single targets. This, tar this team is not specified to do well against big groups. So how would I conquer that? How would I counter that? Big groups. <laughs> Big freaking groups. Why wouldn't I? Definitely using our bookkeeper boys. Melee boys because we're probably going to have to at some point in time drop Livian. She gets tanky. She gets pretty tanky as you play. Anti-air. Silas is going to be a little bit of an issue. At least send two at a time. Wonderful. If I can time my um, if I could time my drops right for those flyers, they could run through this entire thing and win it. All I got to do is make sure they don't come out when Silas has his ult active. If I can do that, I'll be good to go. All right, let's swap these out here. What is my game plan? First, well, there's gonna be mediums, so there's a chance we're gonna win this. Um, I have 363,000, he has 340,000. And the only thing I do about that is I kind of gauge if the champions are well built. Um, it's not as necessary to worry about BP as much as Guild v Guild. It's useful, but not as necessary to be worried about. 
All right, they're gonna melt this bad boy here, but that's fine. I'd rather than melt him, because Silas is gonna do quick work on him. Understandable. I'm gonna go after Aracha next. All right, wait till his ult finishes. I'm right, gonna send our bookkeepers out. Boop, that's a good blend. Silas ult ended, and now I'm gonna drop Aracha. Once Aracha's dead, I can go through there and get some work done. Oh, well, never mind. she's not dropping at all. <laughs> so, let's send some Necros for some support. I just want to have more targets for them to hit. And let's send a few through. I think Silas prioritizes air targets though. If this ult goes off, they're in trouble. Never mind, they're done. Oof. Wait on the ult. Nine. And okay, here. Let's send our melee boys with them. Give them a little bit more stuff they have to attack. And if I can get enough build up, I'm gonna try to get over them again. I'm gonna fly over them again. Actually, you know what? No. I'm gonna send our melee boys in and see if we can get a kill on Aracha and push through. Time is a little too tight to get a win. Yeah. Mm. Is that you? Tough team. But now they gotta just push past regulars. If I can get three past them, I'm good. Looks like that's a challenge. No Necromancer, this is not happening. Woof. So I'm gonna battle that team again. This time, I'm not gonna waste time at the beginning with the tank that really just got obliterated and just wasted costs. Um, I'm gonna circle, I'm gonna use this, the second half of that strategy much sooner so that people can see that's how you would beat that team. Cause you saw I can beat them, but I don't see enough if I did that strategy. <laughs> Edit teams, our tanky boy did great, but he was not a good idea to start off with initially. Our flyers didn't do much work, so I'm gonna swap them out. And I'm going to send groups of enemies that could run by uh, once we get rid of the initial phase. So I'm gonna have the dogs ready. The dogs are one of the most slept on champion or demons in Guild v Guild because you, all, you almost always send them out at the end of the fight. The goal is to get the kills in quick enough and then once you have the kills, you can you know pretty much do what you like to do. I think I may still have to send the tankers out because I need Silas' ult gone and I need two of everything else is gonna be on my teams. Yeah, hmm, guess I gotta do it. All right. Thank you, boy. You got to sacrifice, but I need those ults to be gone from them. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. I forgot the option. I, I forgot the order I sent him in beforehand. I'll send this too. That'd be fine. All right, so if we can get the six, and our melee boys out, good. That may be able to drop Livian. If I can drop Livian, I'm good. But it's gonna get to a Racha, which is nice. All right, and now that the ult's going off, he's gonna get some kills, but I'm fine, because his ult's gonna end, and Regulus is busy, is already, his, his ult is pretty much expired. And also, um, I noticed that the healer wasn't aimed at Hex, aimed at uh, Regulus. First, he wasn't gonna be able to do much if you can't heal him. So I saw that opening, figure out how to split that. That allowed me to get a dub and at least show somebody how I could beat this team. So we can still make it happen. I will say I wish I got a three, um, three stack in the first battle. That would have been better because now we don't have to have somebody that spends a battle on that last single hit. I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you see somebody that has like 10 HP left, just leave it be. Go fight somebody else you can get more meat off of a win. And then as you can tell, as you get wins, you get higher rewards per win. So that's why I put these Guild v Guild videos out. The tough ones, but let me get on to the other content I was talking about before. So this content that's coming is called Demon Crusaders or Demon Crusade. What that is, is all the champions that you, not all the champions, all the demons that you have, your whole collection, if I'm not mistaken, you can use them in the PVE content that's coming up soon. Now, is it gonna be a temporary event or is it gonna be a staple? I think it's gonna be a staple of it. I think it's gonna be something that's continuously usable in the content, like Tide is. Um, also, if they do a reverse version of Tide, that would be fire. I would pay, I would pay attention to that every single day. I have fun with that. But I like Guild v Guild a lot because I like the chance of using these guys because they're not like meta heroes or anything. They're really just figuring out a, a good strategy to go against um, the enemies that are there. Also, there's three different, um, three new demons that's gonna be added. One's the Fool. One I think is like a Scalekin warrior, and then there's another epic that's being added. Um, the Fool is a legendary. 
I'm gonna actually do a video. I think I should do a video. I'm gonna jump on a test server and show some of the newer um, demons that are out. I don't think I could do any battles with them because I didn't register for Gil v Gil on the test server. It happens, what are you gonna do? It happens. But um, I think I can show them, show their kit, show what they can do. I can at least do that to give you guys an idea of what's coming so you can start preparing for it because it's about to get nice around here and I'm looking forward to what the um, demon side of Watch Over Realms is bringing. That being said, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this content. Guild v Guild is tough. I put a little less edits in the Guild v Guild, I'll be honest with you, but my goal is to get these out in a quick enough time for you guys to watch them and then make a difference on your attacks. This has been your boy, Mortal Mike. May you have some amazing runs in Guild v Guild. If you can't do amazing, find a team that's easy to beat, beat them, and make it easy for your allies to beat them. Unlike what I did, I showed how not to beat them, and then I put a video out about it. <laughs> But this has been your boy, Border Mike. I hope y'all have an amazing time. Uh, thank you guys yet again for watching, and I hope to see you soon. I'm also going to do a video right after this because I really want to. I'm going to summon for Falcia. I'm going to do it because I want that champion. Um, yet and not amazing. I don't care. I missed out on Edith thinking that she wasn't amazing because I was watching so much content. I thought she wasn't amazing. I have a difference in opinion in that. I'll explain it in a different video, too. This has been your boy, Mortal Mike. Hope you're having an amazing time. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to chat about. I'm here to do it. I'm here to make it work. If you want to chat about Edith, I might talk, I might talk about that in the comments too. I may. I may. But I'm going to do a full video too. Y'all have an awesome time. Peace.